Make out to the family channel. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Welcome to the Family Leak channel. If you are new to the channel, I am Sonia. Everybody's new to the channel. Hang on, we're only two weeks old. Everyone's new. I am Sonia from The Hooligans and I did a, a haul on our, our, our own channel where I did a Christmas haul for books for the kids and stuff like that. But what I thought of today, what I would do is my favourite books that we've kind of come to collect in the last four, even four and a half years. So there's been quite an awful lot of books and I said, these are my favourite. The girls probably have their own because we go to the library every week and things like that. I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> these are my favourite ones. So, Teddy, Lammy. This is Schaefer's Door, by the way, the Irish Fairy Door Company. They are rock stars. They know the Queen, 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 Queen what? Is it Queen Katrina? Maybe Queen Katrina. And she decides what fairies go to live in what people's houses. And this is Schaefer and Babe Bean lives in the other room. It's very cute. But that's a vlog for a whole other day, lads. Today is about, I, do you know what I'm looking for? My phone. <laughs> because my phone is in here. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where it is. Okay, lads. Teddy and I and Shafra and Lammy and Tiger. And, and, and that's it. We're going to go through our books for my favourite ones for the last couple of years. So there's 10 of them. And this is the first one. This is Silly Barney, the naughty Barney, who likes to sneak into the farmer's garden and eat his flowers. But his flowers have magic powers. And the further on in the story you go, the more Barney's coat grows and grows. You will ignore the Crayola doodling all over it. But the girls got this when they were one. It's cardboard. It's gone in the bath. It's gone, got wet. It has had food spilled on it. People have drawn on it. But it is a fantastic book. It's one of my favourites. It's a very touchy-feely. Naughty Barney gets his hair cut and it grows and grows and stuff like that. It's very cute. It says Silly Barney. I think it was like, well, it's £7, so it was about eight fifty, And um, it's just a really nice book. It's really funny. It's really touchy-feely and stuff like that. And it's a hardback book. Can't go wrong. Let me, you hold that there. Good woman, good woman. Then the next one is my favourite is the first paperback book the girls ever got. It is Hugo and Bella. So this is Bella the bird and Hugo the hippo. And every hippo has a bird and mine is Bella. No, correction. I think you'll find every bird has a hippo and Hugo is mine. And they're going to the, the costume ball and they can't decide what they want to be. So it's things like we're going, how about a king and his jester? And the king looks fabulous, Hugo looks fabulous. But Bella looks ridiculous. And then they end up fighting over the costume. So there's like orange paint everywhere. And there's footprints. And Bella storms off in a huff. And then she realises that going to the party won't, won't be no fun if she doesn't go with her best friend. And that So she decides to dress up as a pea. Because that's what Hugo wanted her to be. And then Hugo feels the same. So he ends up dressing up as a pea as well. Because he feels guilty. So they both go and they both go dressed as Hugo and Bella, two peas in a pod. And I suppose it just means like no matter what walk of life you're from, that, you know, everybody has a best friend and everybody's meant to have a best friend and everybody will find somebody kind of way. And it's a really nice book. It was six pounds. So it's about seven, eight euro. And it's one of the girls, it's the first book the girls ever learned off by heart. And even still now they would know it off by heart. It's lost two pages. It is a paper book, but I'm minding it, so it's fine. Hold on top a second now. Hold top a second. Okay, what else have we got? We have Red Ted. I'm going in the years that we got them and stuff like that. This is Red Ted from the book collection that we got. My cousin got on Amazon for Charlie when she was about two. And it had a huge collection of Michael Rosen and stuff. And this one is nice because it's about Teddy's getting left behind people feeling lonely and all he wants to do is find his way home but you can see the illustrations are quite old-fashioned very 1920s kind of you know he's even a teddy that looks from like the 1920s very similar to Pannington Bear kind of story but it's very beautifully told very beautifully illustrated you know even when he's lost and he's lonely he finds a friend in a crocodile and they make it home to his little girl's house and stuff like that and it has a happy ending and it's 
you know, it's perfect for bedtime. You know, what more do you want? Happy endings and teddy bears and kisses and stuff. That is number three. Jesus, that. Then my octopus is guided in the shades. I love the Beatles. Since I was a child, I am obsessed with the Beatles. Ringo Starr is my favourite. Thomas the Tank and obviously it was one of my favourites growing up as well. One of my favourite songs of all time from the Beatles is Octopus's Garden. It's just a very interesting story, a very interesting song. And I Am The Waters as well. You wonder what was going on in their heads when they were writing it and stuff. But this is actually, I bought this when Charlie was a baby. So I knew, I knew I should, like, she's going to learn it. She is going to learn it, it'll be fine. So this one is beautifully illustrated, very bright, psychedelic colours. Um, probably for a very good reason. But um, psychedelic colours, very trippy kind of pages and stuff like that. But again, like, let's look at the song. It's a very trippy song. And Ringo, you get a CD with it, and Ringo actually narrates the song through it and stuff like that. And so, yeah, it just goes on to about Ringo and what he's been doing and stuff like that. But... I think for me, one of my favourites, obviously this is one of my favourite ones as well, but I remember, um, oh my god, Michael, oh my god, George Martin, I'm trying to remember when was it, I'd say it was about 15 years ago, George Martin did the one album where he got a load of celebrities together to do covers of their favourite Beatles song, and I'm pretty sure it's Robin, Robbie William, Robin Williams that does Octopus's Garden, God rest him. And then Jim Carrey does I Am The Walrus. And they're absolutely fantastic. If you haven't already seen them or heard... Just can't get the help. If you haven't already heard it, I would highly recommend it. Goldie Hawn is on it. It's just a beautiful, beautiful CD. And it's one of my most treasured CDs. Dr. Zeus. Everybody loves Dr. Zeus. Oh, the places you will go, the people you will see. And it's about you deciding who you want to be and where you want to go. And nobody should tell you where to go. And nobody should tell you what to do. We have the full Dr. Zeus collection. And I'm going to be honest, most of them are a tongue twister. You really have to have an excellent grasp of the English language to read them and stuff like that. But even Farah is obsessed with Dr. Zeus. She loves them. Um, so things like, oh, out there things can happen, and frequently they do, to people as brainy, as footsie as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew, just go right along. You'll start happening too. So it's beautiful, again, Dr. Zeus, you can't go wrong. As I sit here and look around the room, I can see random books lying around the room of Dr. Zeus and things like that. It's a massive, massive collection. I think it costs us about 48 euro. And I got it for Christmas for the girls when Charlie was about three. Baron would have been about two. But it's brilliant. Like, I'm pretty sure we still have them all. Nothing, none of them are damaged or anything like that. Let's mind the books, will you? When you, when you just mind the books. Then, as they got older, The Giraffes Can't Dance is, again, one that we haven't read in a while because we're kind of coming to the end of it. So it's perfect for, like, two to three kind of age group. And it's about, you know, not conforming marching to the beat of your own drum and stuff like that so Gerald is a giraffe with a very long neck and his he's got really narrow legs and he can't dance but every year in Africa there is the jungle dance where all the animals turn up to prance and dance so the warthogs and their waltzing the lions start to tango the rhinos rock and roll but poor old Gerald can't dance so he kind of wanders off into the forest on his own and then he gets to a clearing and he sees the moon and he sees how beautiful it is and that the stillness of the moon almost makes the trees and the we and the the, the dudes that are being a pond can't remember um we swerve and kind of t d do this and a cricket starts kind of talking to him and he makes friends with the cricket the cricket and his mates start playing the violin and he closes his eyes and he starts swinging and dancing and being like a ballerina and it's beautiful but it's just i suppose it just proves that you know you don't have to conform you do it your way and it's again it's low it's kind of battered now and stuff like that but it's a beautiful story and there's about six others in the collection and stuff like that like rumble in the jungle commotion in the ocean and the jungle run and stuff like that giles anderson i presume it's out of the uk and stuff like that and again we got that for one of the christmases or birthdays then Stickman, if you don't already know who Stickman is, please, please, please go out and get the book before it becomes a movie. It is by Julia Donaldson 
and she's part creator of the Gruffalo and Alex Scheffler is the Anna are the illustrator for it, but it's a very repetitive song and the girls love it. It's the most bizarre stories and the adventures that he goes on for his family to get back to his family, all the while he's singing in rhyme. And the girls know it off by heart, oh stick man, I'm stick man. <laughs> Not me. Everyone will know it. If you don't already, please go and get it for Christmas for the two to three, the three to four kind of age group before it comes out in the cinema next year because it's such a good, good book. It really is. It's about winter. Perfect time to get it for Christmas, really. And then I found my phone. <laughs> found it. What time is it? 28 minutes past. I have to go get... Yeah, I have to go get Farah. Then The Smartest Giant in Town. This is a new one. We only got this last year about George the Giant and how he's the tallest giant in the town but he was the scruffiest giant and he went to the shop and he bought new clothes and he was feeling all very sad but when he got his new clothes he felt better and stuff like that so he, he left his old clothes behind but as he was going home in his lovely new suit and his new shoes and jeans and stuff like that he started meeting animals along the way who were worse off than he was so even though he was feeling really terrible these animals were feeling worse and what he ended up doing as he got home walked along the way was he ended up giving them his clothes off his back so kind of it teaches I suppose for me what it does is it teaches no matter how bad you're feeling or how bad you feel things are getting that it can always be worse it's always going to be worse for somebody else so it's about helping and doing what you can and things like that so he gave the giraffe his scarf and then he still sang home he still walked home singing to himself so look me up and down I'm the smartest giant in town and he gave you know he donates his shoes his socks he donates his shirt to a goat, his to a sock to a fox. And then when he gets home, he's back in his own clothes and he's feeling quite alone again. But all these animals that he's helped along the way come and they throw him a party to say thank you and they give him a crown and stuff like that. It's really, really nice and it's really about giving back and things like that and, um, and being nice to others. And, you know, that's really, really important. And it's a really lovely way of doing it and stuff like that. And then last but not least, this is one that we will greet for years and years. This is the treasury of Spike Milligan. If you don't know who Spike Milligan is, shame on you. <laughs> but Spike Milligan and Roald Dahl were two peas in a pod. They're just their, the bizarreness of their books and stuff like that, or their poetry, you know, nothing. The most bizarre things were acceptable. You know, whatever came into his mouth, he wrote it down and he made a song or a poem about it. And I suppose, like for me, this, I'm a huge Spike Milligan fan, I'm a huge Roald Dahl fan. So having this, that the girls can grow with and read and stuff like that. And then I have the grown-up Spike Milligans, I have the grown-up Roald Dahls, and I have the, or the, the Roald Dahl um, Revolting Rhymes. I have that as well. And then we have all the Roald Dahl collection. But there's certainly, for this, this is kind of grabs you and pulls you in and things like that. So on the Ning Nang Nang, where the cows go bong and the monkeys all say boop. On the Ning Nang Nang, where the trees go ping and the teapots jibber jabber too. On the nang ning nang, all the mice go clang, and you just can't catch them when they do. So it's the ning nang nang, and the cows go bong, and the nang ning nang, trees go pink. It's really, 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 really funny. So even the alphabet, he's done the alphabet and things like that. This is my favourite. Apart from the ones with sentimental value and stuff like that, Spike Milligan is my favourite. It's hardback, and it stood the test of time, and he's really, really funny, and it includes a CD. But I don't know where the CD is. Oh, it's still there? Yay! I'm going to put that in the car, I think. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take it out and I'm going to put it in the car and we're going to listen to it. So, they are my top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, on this one is perfect for Christmas. We got it last year. It is Beatrix Potter and this one is read by Emma Thompson. So it is The Adventures of Beatrix Potter's Christmas Adventures read by Emma Thompson and it's really really nice and she talks about what an honour it was to be asked by them to come in and read and stuff like that and about their friend the turkey. So if you're looking for something new and something different that the parents will enjoy as much as the children, Beatrix Potter Christmas Collection is a must. I'm so excited about that. It's really, really cute. We got it last year and it's really, really beautiful. And my understanding is, is that Emma Thompson actually wrote this herself. That she, This is a new one that Emma Thompson has written. So we are all done, people. That is my top 10 children's books of the last four years that I have come across. I hope you enjoyed it. If you were new to the channel, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. 
hit subscribe and let us know below who you are and where you're from and we shall see you all tomorrow for a different day different vlog different style thank you very much for watching see you later Slon. thank you for watching